Hello, everyone. Welcome to April's Web Workers. This is the first of our social distancing episodes. Um, obviously, uh, some of you are Web Workers pros at this point. Um, you have been with us in Memphis for a long time. Uh, however, I know there are some people uh, hanging out in chat and in the viewership right now that have no clue what this thing is, uh, other than maybe you saw that we were talking about Gatsby today and you were interested. Uh, and so for them, I'm going to say Web Workers has been a staple of the Memphis technology scene for about six years now. We've been doing monthly meetups, second Tuesday of every month, uh, going back since 2013. So we've been doing it for a while now. Um, and it's just a, it's a front end developer designer meetup that happens. Uh, we have speakers, we have pizza, obviously no pizza in this sort of environment anymore. Uh, but we still want to continue learning and obviously going forward, at least for the next few months, we don't know what the world holds in store for us and we can't get together uh, in, in groups of 15 or more. Uh, so let's have it here uh, on Twitch uh, and see how it goes. Maybe do it uh, a little bit more down, down the road. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be hearing from Josh Bryant over here, who is our uh, co-organizer, but he's also a Gatsby fiend. He's gonna be talking about a website that he built uh, in Gatsby in a very short period of time to track restaurants that are open and doing, you know, carry out um, stuff for uh, uh, for food in his locality, which uh, for those of you don't, who don't know, Memphis is made up of a whole bunch of different little cities throughout. So uh, we're going to be hearing from him in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, but I do want to mention, we don't actually have a sponsor right now because the sponsorship is there to pay for the food. But I do want to shout out to our longstanding sponsor overall, which is Baco, which is a recruiter here in Memphis and based in some other uh, cities. I just want to go ahead and mention them, even though they're not paying for anything tonight, because they've been with us since literally the second month. So I really appreciate them, even though there's nothing for them to pay for uh, tonight. Uh, let me think. Let me go to my list and see if there's anything else that I want to talk about. Uh, we're going to be doing this again probably next month, second Tuesday, uh, maybe even more if this works out well. Um, yeah, uh, I would usually go into a spiel. If you're from Memphis and you aren't familiar with the Memphis Technology Foundation and the Memtech community, uh, go to memphistechnology.org. You can find our Slack group, uh, and you can hang out with a whole bunch of technologists in Memphis. For the most part, probably others are welcome too, but, um, but it is you know primarily Memphis folks that are hanging out in there. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested to see how this goes. I'm looking for any and all feedback. If you have any questions for Josh, post them in chat uh, and I'll get them over to him either uh, by popping in on him uh, or just some text. And uh, for those of you in Memtech, if you're not, if you're not able to chat, uh, you can hit me up in the Slack and you can let me know and I'll get those questions over there as well. Yeah, anything you've got, Josh, before, we, before I change over to your screen and uh, let you start going to town on this? <coughs> No, I'm, uh, the only thing I have to say, and you would have to speak better to this than me, but did you not get the email about the COVID Memphis hackathon thing that they're doing? Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, me, let me find that information real fast. Um, you can, if you want to speak about it real fast while I pull that up and find a link for chat. That's the thing. I don't know much <laughs> about it. I just saw, I literally just saw it um, like while I was laying the baby down for bed and I just totally forgot to re look it up to see what was going on with it. But um, yeah, I thought that's going to be something cool going on and, and very uh, related to what I'm going to be talking about. So, so I'll, I'll post some information about that in chat once my computer's internet decides to, uh, to give some resources back from Twitch. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over to, uh, to presentation mode and, uh, and you can kind of take it away, Josh. Cool beans. If okay. Um, so I wanted to start off by talking a uh, like, this is a little bit different. So right now we're in this like insane global pandemic. And I think what a lot of people fail to really think about because they're doing okay at their house and they're able to get ClickList or Instacart or whatever it is system going. But there are literally millions of people, especially now, unemployed, uh, unable to like feed themselves, their children, their family members, the people they're taking care of because of coronavirus, whatever. So if you have time and money, 
I highly recommend that you donate to feedingamerica.org. I've got it pulled up right here. I also linked it in our Memtech chat. Uh, I've been donating. I've been donating to Mid South Food Bank, which is sponsored by Feeding America, uh, before the coronavirus pandemic took place. But now, more than ever, they need everybody's like donations and any type of anything you can give them. So like. I wanted to have to go ahead and put that up, especially seeing as I'm specifically going to be talking about building restaurant trackers for us privileged people who can go and still get pickup, delivery, and carry out food. Um, I kind of wanted to start by talking about, this was my inspiration, and I really want to shout out to a um, fellow Memtech um, user. Um, his name is Keith Maddox, and he works with me at Lens Rentals where I work. And Keith is amazing. I mean, he's just an amazing developer in general, but like he got together with someone uh, with, he, he lives in a college town and he got with one of his professors and they said, this would be a really cool idea if we could, um, hold on, I'm gonna mute you, Brian, cause I'm getting feedback on you. Okay. Um, anyway, Keith uh, came up with a website where he wanted to like, he, he wanted to go out to the uh, Chamber of Commerce of his town and be like, hey, we should really spotlight these uh, businesses that are offering services for whatever reason. And uh, he went to the Chamber of Commerce and it didn't really go anywhere. Like, I think his vision, his idea was to make this uh, something where um, businesses could advertise their work and, and keep all these local businesses open. And then this is kind of all it became, these three restaurants. And there's a few more, I'm sure, but those were the only ones that got put in this website. So I was like, I'm going to take that and run with it. And I said, okay, what could I do the absolute least amount of work and get the maximum benefit out of? And I said, like, I immediately reached towards you know, something that's most before, um, and I love Gatsby. It's easy, it's, I won't say it's seamless because it's not seamless, but it is easy and within minutes you can have a like fully functioning website up and ready. Um, it, it, it's, it's just so simple and, and like, I gave that talk about how awesome and easy it is. I, I over ago two, two years ago, I don't remember, but I gave it a long time ago, and since then it's only gotten easier and like more robust. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my finished product first. So like I will say, Keith prettier than mine, um, but there's actually design reasons for that. So. I was gonna build this thing. I wrote down on a piece of paper, like what do I, what are my goals? What do I want to do with this website? And I said, one of my goals was not to be advertising or marketing for businesses. And now I understand that like tangentially, it is marketing because I'm still demonstrating these websites and like showing a place for people to go to. But what I didn't want to do is create a hierarchy where people thought that they were not getting a fair share of whatever. So my like number one goal was I didn't want to have I didn't want to have images uh, because not all restaurants, not all local restaurants in my community have you know a logo or an image or whatever. Sometimes they have an image, but it's really low quality or whatever. So. To remove all of that, I went straight to, let's just show data. Let me make cards and let me just make data. I don't want it to be a marketing site. Um, the whole point, my goal, my mission, as it were, of this website was to give my fellow community members, my fellow like citizens, a single resource that they could go to and find food that offers delivery, curbside pickup, but, but 
people who were following the CDC guidelines was really what I was going for. I, I didn't want to publish websites that were still open for dine in and I didn't want to publish websites that uh, that were not following the CDC practices. So like all these people purposely changed their standard operating platform to support coronavirus and, and COVID-19 um, CDC guidelines. So anyway, uh, this is the final product. I just had a hero image, a kind of description of what this is. Um, and I have a filter here and it's really, uh, I, I I really wanted to support local businesses first. So I, I made a little bit of a hierarchy here where local is the first button and then regional chains, which are still pretty much local restaurants are second and then national chains are last. And I honestly, it took me a long time to finally add a national chain to this website because I don't particularly support national chains just in general. But at the end of the day, like, you know, everybody's going to Taco Bell. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't actually put Taco Bell on here specifically because they were fine. Uh, but these folks are way better. Like, these people need our support. So anyway, I built it around that. And so the idea was you have a name. They're all the same size. Nobody's bigger than the other one. Uh, a phone number so that could call them if they do the curbside pickup what kind of food but i don't have a filter on that because once again there's a little bit of a bias there when you click like there's like people uh i think like milano's uh which is very tasty don't get me wrong but they offer pizza pasta and sandwiches so they really kind of fill in lots of categories and i feel like you know it's like a shotgun theory you throw as much as you can at a wall and see what sticks but anyway so I didn't have a filter on that. And my services, um, my services are, you know, like what they offer, curbside pickup, carry out, free local delivery, mm, or I mean, local or delivery. And then there, there's variations of all of those things. Once again, it's not sortable by that. It's not filterable by that. So it is what it is. Um, lastly, this is technically a button, but I just used it because I wanted to make sure that you knew, once again, a thing to show that this is a local business versus a regional chain or a national chain or whatever. Um, and then a link to their website, because a lot of these places, a lot of these places have their online ordering, like, so that you can order on their website. But some of these places didn't have a website, so I actually made this text smaller than all the rest of the text because once again i didn't want to create a visual hierarchy where i'm fighting with competing businesses and anyway uh i totally did this all on my own no one in collierville asked me to do this uh, but on my next door one day there was like a flyer going around that someone had made that was real static um and it was just a list of all the restaurants that were open and so it kind of got gave me the idea, like, let me build this because it was hard to find that flyer a second time to, to fill this out. So I was like, hey, I'll just make this a website and then everybody can know where that website is, bookmark it, do whatever they want. Um, so anyway, technology stack. So I reached out to Gatsby. Uh, I reached out to grab Gatsby because I love React um, and I love GraphQL. And that's Gatsby in the static site generator. So it's like, and it's super fast because it's a static site generator. So like Gatsby was a was an easy decision to make in this technology stack thing. Um, what I really didn't want to do, and I did last time with like my personal blog, was I didn't want to start from scratch because I wanted this to be, like I said in the beginning, I wanted this to be as absolutely simple as possible because I wanted maximum reward, minimum effort. Um, so I remember them, I remember a long time ago when I first started playing with Gatsby, like the starter library was kind of small. It was like limited to like a blog and like an e-commerce e site and stuff like that. But now uh, <laughs> it's massive. There are starters for like everything. And I think anybody can upload a starter like 
when it, for whatever they want at, at any point. I think it can take it down if you don't, uh, if it doesn't meet their criteria. But but for the most part, like, I mean, I'm definitely not going to say it's competing with, um, I'm not going to say it's competing with uh, WordPress, but 350 starters or templates, you could call them, um, for a static site generator is nuts. Like, this is so much stuff. There's everything. Um, I, uh, anyway, I, I kind of like poked around here and I was like, well, I don't, I don't actually see one that meets what I was trying to do. Um, but I kind of saw this guy right here. I mean, it was at the top, like I said, minimal effort, maximum reward. Um, and I was like, okay, this is perfect. It's got a title. It's got a descriptor, some button, which I don't really care about, but a list of posts. And that's all I wanted to do, right? And so super easy. You literally run this command and you have, um, let me share my other screen. Okay, so literally you just run this command. Um, I'm not gonna run this command because I already have this run. Um, that I'm going to take forever to delete it out of my thing. And switch to COVID, Collierville, and then like you get a structure that looks a little bit like this. Um, really, the important thing is you have this data folder, you have a Gatsby config, um, node modules, whatever. You get a package JSON, a public, a source, and a static directory. And these are the kind of important things. Um, Whenever you download a, a Gatsby site and you just start it up and you install the Gatsby CLI, which um, kind of the precursor to all of this is you have to have Gatsby installed. Um, but and I think that's just npm install g or yarn install if you use yarn, but npm install g like Gatsby CLI. That's what it used to be. I think it still is. Anyway, do that and then you get these cool Gatsby commands. Uh, which I think I can do, oops, these cool Gatsby commands. Um, the real key ones that I, uh, I, I'm going to tell you that you, you, you'll use all the time are Gatsby develop, which starts a dev server, a node server where you can make changes and it hot reloads and it's live and all that cool stuff. Um, Gatsby build, which is when you're ready to deploy it or when you're ready to, you know, get those static HTML files that you can serve from whatever system you want, uh, you do Gatsby build, um, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. I don't actually run Gatsby build because I use a uh, deployment service that hosts my website and it runs it for me. I literally don't have to do anything once again. Minimal effort, maximum reward. Um, Gatsby serve, which is after you built a file, if you want to see exactly what it'll look like in production, uh, you can run Gatsby serve and it'll run a server on the last build of a thing. You don't get, I don't think you get the, the watching, so you can't like do hot changes or anything, but you wouldn't do anyway because it's the static build of the thing. Um, I don't really use any of the other ones. Um, uh, Gatsby knew that's how I got the COVID call your bill. I showed you guys that command. Uh, Gatsby plugin is actually pretty important because uh, you can install all kinds of different plugins for your Gatsby site and it'll kind of set up a default implementation uh, on your site. So like Google Analytics is a Gatsby plugin. There's a, a WordPress um, <clears throat> a WordPress um, data source plugin. Um, there's a there's a person in chat, Fry Phil. He could tell you a hundred different. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. He's talking about it right now. Uh, <laughs> there's a generation of an XML feed. Um, like you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I have absolutely zero idea about what telemetry does, but I'm going to read you what this says. It says enable or disable Gatsby anonymous analytics collection. So if you're one of those tinfoil hat people, maybe you want to play around with that and uh, not let Gatsby know anything about you. Um, 
Anywho, I'm just going to run Gatsby develop so you get an idea of what it looks like when you run uh, a dev server. So you're going to get Gatsby develop. It's going to do some things. It's going to run a little slower on my computer because I have a lot going on right now with the stream and uh, Skype and I have a Docker container running for some other stuff. But typically it's really fast. Like I think within like 25 seconds, it's up and ready to go. So like you can you can do the math. There's a couple things here. But the cool thing is, is like after it does its thing, you get this like local host uh, guy, which I'll come over here and share that real quick. Um, that's this. There you go. So like I have made zero changes on this thing since I pushed this off to production and uh, well, I made hundreds of changes, but like right now my local copy and the production copy are identical. Uh, so you're seeing pretty much what's on this tab over here. Um, but anyway, you can see it's, it's a nice little local thing and I'm going to, I'm going to make a change. What am I going to change? Let's do a CSS change. I don't know if that's uh, instantaneous or not, but rebuilding. Yeah, it is. All right, so I just changed my blue to black. Um, so that's how quick it was. It was like I didn't even actually notice it happen. Um, and I'm going to switch back to command prompt. Uh, so you guys can see, like, uh, when I made that change, it rebuilt the development environment or the, the development bundle. Um, and it took half a second, a little, little more than half a second. Then I changed it back and it took another half of a second. <clears throat> um, uh, one more feature of Gatsby that I want to show that I probably in all honesty, the, the greatest thing about Gatsby to me is that it is a GraphQL server. Um, I never remember it's three underscores. Um, and so like my GraphQL is pretty lame and, and you'll see why here in a minute. But um, this is, so like I said, I've just downloaded this starter and like started building whatever right and so uh right out of the box there's a bunch of let me increase the font size for us old people um there's a lot of stuff that comes right out of the box or I i'll say right out of the box out of the box you get nothing but if you start with a starter or even start with a really basic gatsby build uh gatsby new or whatever you get these you get a lot of this stuff out of the box uh, one of the really cool things out of the box, this, this actually is out of the box. I think it's site metadata. Um, oh, wait, no, I don't, I don't want that. I want this. That's, that's filterable parameters. I want like, okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with GraphQL, GraphQL is a graph query language. Crazy. So you can write these queries. And then if you notice inside my um inside of my uh url bar what it's actually doing is it's constructing json um essentially to send my query as the query parameter to uh an endpoint which in this case is the graphical i mean a uh, graphql endpoint um so like it it really constructs it well this is actually exactly how it looks but it's more uh condensed um, anyway, the cool thing is, is that like when I hit this play button, which will execute the query on the server, I'm, I'm using air quotes here for the, the server, um, cause all this is, uh, static. It's going to run that execution, uh, engine against what I have as my backend schema for, um, GraphQL. And then it's going to give me the data that it knows about, um, in this, it's like, okay, so I have uh, a metadata description. I have a home uh, node that has a description and a title, and 
this is what I get. Um, so it's a really neat and very comprehensive way of structuring your backend data. GraphQL is. Gatsby uses Gat, uh, GraphQL, which is amazing because it's a, it's a static site. So it's literally, it, it traverses your files, looks at them and says, okay, we, let's make some sense out of some of this. And it determines things about them. Um, I'll explain that a little bit in greater detail here in a minute. But the coolest part, honestly, the coolest part about GraphQL specifically is that it is self-documenting. Um, so I I did not look at this this backend schema the any of this stuff before I gave this talk. I know I know about GraphQL because I work on GraphQL every day, but like I didn't look all this stuff up. But if I wanted to find out something, so for instance, I pulled up site site metadata description home description, and if I was like I have no idea what I need to be pulling up, I could go over here and like find okay site that sounds like something that i might want to query and then it's going to tell me okay these are the possible arguments so those are things like filterable criteria i can i can pass in like i mean this is not one but let's say i wanted to sort my metadata by something well if my backend schema declared a sort argument and it took in a string parameter of us ascending or whatever then my backend schema would know what to do with that information. The arguments on site, which that's this, are build time, children, host. Like you can see them over here. If you want to know more about what those things are, you can click on them over here in the doc. And you get all this for free with just graph. Uh, this is called graphical. And it's um, if you're building just like a static, let's say you're not using Gatsby, but you still want to take advantage of GraphQL. like that's totally possible and that's exactly what they're doing here but you can just implement the node package um, graphical and then also you have to have a graphql endpoint you have to have something for it to consume but you get this and like i said it's self it's self-documenting this one is not <laughs> i'll be honest this one is not as self-documenting as some of the other ones but a really great uh resource if you want to see Super awesome. Uh, okay. uh, let's go to the Explorer. Okay, so this is gra this is um makes use of your real live data. Cool. Oh, I gotta sign in. Um, so this is GitHub's actual GraphQL endpoint. Mm. Oh my God, should have done this before. Oh, it's letting me know. I love, I love that you can actually go in and give them access to the web worker stuff. Be careful with that. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Um, okay, so um, this is a way better documented um, thing. Uh, so on a query, let's say, okay, here's a great one. So the code of conduct, this is a field I could query that's on the top level query thing. So if I type here and I can hit control space and it gives me the possible things that I can look up. So I can type code of conduct, and then it takes in a key. I'm not gonna, oh, it, it has to have a key. Well, I don't know how to do that one. Um, let's find one that I do know how to do. Do, 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 do. Oh, GitHub metadata. This looks cool, okay. Uh, oh, that's interesting. GitHub, wait, was it not? Oh, it's on meta. Meta, and then I can say, give me the GitHub IP addresses. And I think that was a, yeah, that's an array of a string and it's required. 
Um, so anyway, so these are the IP addresses that users connect to for Git operations. Um, so I can hit play, and then those are the IP addresses that I can, you know, whitelist on my DNS server or whatever. Um, but I got that information straight from GitHub's um, backend schema. Like they documented that when they were building their backend schema, and then I could like look at it, like without knowing anything about how their data source works, how their uh, how they structure their data. I could follow this chain of events and say I wanted to. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I think I can look up repositories um, by me. Anyway, I'm not going to do all this. This is a lot of work. Uh, but anyway, I highly encourage you to play around with this because it's using your own data. Um, okay. GraphQL has a couple of um, keywords here. Query. Query is read-only format. So anything I query, it's just going to tell me data. Uh, I don't highly recommend you go around and play with the mutations because mutation literally is what it says. It mutates the data on the end point. Um, so don't go in here and be like, I don't know, delete repository. I think that was the option when I was playing around with it. Uh, delete project, yeah. Like don't go in here and like run this one, maybe. Just throwing that out there. but. You know, play around with the GitHub uh, GraphQL if you want to play around with GraphQL in a real low risk environment. Anyway, cool thing is Gatsby comes with GraphQL right out of the box. There's a lot of information with this all site, all markdown remark because it has a markdown interpreter, all that stuff. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. You, you're welcome to read the documentation on Gatsby's website. They're great. Uh, they're written by the community that uses it. So it they're constantly getting better um it's already great but it's constantly getting better um so let's look at some code uh, i'm gonna switch to my vs code so when you guys look at this um i'm not ashamed of it because it does exactly what i was hoping it would do but i will tell you this <laughs> Um, I, I think I've been harping on this a lot, but minimum effort, maximum reward. I literally did very little. Um, actually, before I show you this code, let me show you what I started with, but we're going to do that in GitHub because uh, I don't want to check out uh, the old thing. Okay, so these are all the commits I've made. Um, let's say, let's do, 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 add and brush wrap all this, removed images, cleaning up unused template boilerplate. That's probably a good one. Okay, so right out of the box, this template came with a bunch of stuff. At first, it came with a bunch of default, like, blog posts that you could do whatever you wanted to, uh, to, to, to see, I guess they were demonstrating how they wanted to do things. So I, like, was like, okay, cool, I don't even need one of these. I just need to make a, you know, I, they call it a blog, it could be called anything. I ended, ended up changing it to posts, but mine is a restaurant. So a blog post for my purposes is a restaurant. Um, and I didn't want there to be a single page, so I deleted all the content from it. Um, and then I needed to like change over my metadata. Um, remember earlier when I was querying on the GraphQL schema uh, site metadata description and then home and then had a title and description. This is where that data comes from. Um, and Gatsby interprets that information for you. So like I could put, um, I can actually add attributes to this if I wanted more. Like let's say you wanted your Facebook URL and your, I don't know, is Google Plus still a thing? Whatever, Google Plus URL on there, your GitHub URL. Um, you could put that here, and once you re reran the Gatsby server, it would look in this Gatsby config, and then it would construct that in your GraphQL. Um, I ended up just, this is mostly getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Uh, I created what I think of as a post um blah 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 delete 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 there's a bunch of delete stuff um 
Cool. I'll actually show code now. Um, let's start with index file. So the index file, um, I think we're all, I mean, if you do any type of web development, index is kind of like, I guess you would call it the entry point of a thing. Um, this is not really any different. So my, uh, in my sources direct, my source directory, there's a pages directory, and this all comes when you generate a Gatsby site. There's a pages directory, and it has an index.js, and that's kind of the entry point to uh, my file. So if you're familiar with React, there are actually a lot, there's a lot more going on here, and I gotta remember um, where it is. Man, it doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, this is the entry point of my file. Um, this thing, we use React. Uh, Gatsby is a React thing. So what I'm doing is, this is the like index page that's being exported um, as my default export for this file. Um, it's a function component. Um, and it takes a data um, object with site, data, all mark, all markdown remark edges, and none of that's important. You don't have to memorize this for any reason. What you need to know is it's getting that data from this query, this page query against the GraphQL schema. So uh, data, which is site and all markdown remark, are these two things, site and all markdown remark. So when those get resolved to be the props of index page, this is what they resolve to. They resolve to my site metadata, title, description, um, and then on a post, which that's what all markdown remark is, it's a post and it gets all the posts, which in GraphQL, your post have, or your, your things have edges and edges have a node. Node is the actual instance of a thing. Uh, so for this instance, it's a post. Um, edges are essentially an array nodes, which would be an array of your posts. Um, and then in that post, I wanted to get the ID and the front matter. This is the most important part for my project. Front matter was a way that I cheated in getting data, uh, essentially. Uh, structured data, let me rephrase it, structured data. Um, and as you can see, this was in my initial commit. Like I didn't really change this from day one, the like first implementation. Like I already knew how I wanted to structure this. What did I want? I wanted a title, a phone number, tags, which are, um, tags are a uh, local, regional chain, whatever. And then category, I'm gonna have that backwards. Uh, tags is the food options that they have so like pizza pasta salad sandwiches whatever category is local regional chain national chain uh the website is is just a url string and services is just a string that looks like an array um doing whatever so we get that data right and it goes into the props of the index page function component and then i just pass that on right so um we get let's see do 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 oh yeah i was really proud of myself for using a hook in this situation um this is a react hook um use state so it like uh lets you select a category or or sorry it selects sets the selected category so when you click like local it changes it to local regional chain changes it to regional chain whatever it starts off this is the default option which is all um meaning none really no no uh category specific um yeah anyway um so i've created some buttons and honestly i'm gonna do a lot of hard coding here because i it was just so much easier I could have probably programmatically created a category um, in the Gatsby config. Um, I could have done some stuff in here, I'm sure, outside of site metadata and been like top level categories or something like that. But 
this was so much easier. I, cre I created an array with the, with the categories that I knew I was going to have and then used that as the key that I'm passing into a function, which is my hook, um, to set the category. So really, this is like, what, three, four lines of code, essentially. And it creates this, uh, it's not easy to switch, but it creates that button array at the top that lets you select what category you want to want to filter on. Um, and then right here, this is actually, hey, I guess you'd call it the meat of my single page website. Um, layout is a React component that is this guy, and I'm going to come back to this. It has children, like it takes children as a prop, which children are anything nested underneath it. And in this event, we have a helmet, which is a React, is a React, um, is a React component that's imported from a library called React Helmet. And I think actually the super funny thing about all this, um, and Ryan or Brian, you, you can uh, let me know about this, but it, I think it's from the NFL. It is, okay, cool. <laughs> it's from Get the NFL. So it's from the NFL, which is why they called it Helmet. But regardless of it being from the NFL, Helmet is um, pretty much data you want to put in the head of your of your react single page application right so like i want the title of this um of this page to be the metadata title and i want the description to be the metadata description and i can change that per page that i use this layout component for um right so like let's say you're really wanting to get into your seo and you want to like build those really neat Twitter cards and open graph cards and stuff like that. Like this gives you the ability to flexibly create that and put it kind of any, I think you can put, it doesn't have to be defined at the top of your um, component structure. It can be defined anywhere and it'll automatically bump it up. Hey, there's my mom in chat. <laughs> um, so here's this button row component. I mean, it's not a component, it's just a div, but these buttons are the buttons that I constructed up here. That's just a JavaScript variable um, that returns uh, an array of these button components. Um, and then literally it's just the output the restaurants at that point. Um, so, restaurants is posts. So I was really lazy and I really should have put this in another file, but I was really lazy. And so I just put it here. This is another function component that takes the edges and, or sorry, it takes an object as its prop that contains attributes called edges and category. And it goes ahead and deconstructs them right here in the, um, prop declaration. So if I come down here, I can see we have edges. So if you're familiar with React, this would be props.edges, props.category. And then these are the um, these are the things that, you know, these are the attributes that that gets. So I'm going ahead and deconstructing them here. And then I'm going to say, I, I started off with a variable called posts that is set to nothing. It's actually really weirdly set to undefined when you define it here. Um, but anyway, and then what I'm doing is I'm just going ahead and building my filtered uh, post. So um, if the category is all or the category is null, then it's just all category, you know, it's all posts. So no, not really a filter, but uh, kind of a filter. Oh, because I'm, it is a filter. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm setting the post variable equal to the edges array uh, with just their title. And then same thing with um, this, uh, where the actual, Sorry, I had to widen it. Um, where the title, where there is a title, that's the that's the boolean here. So we're filtering where an edge has a front matter title. Um, the reason I did that, um, I'll get into in just a second. But um, and then the second one is, does it have a title and 
does the category in the front matter match the category that we sent as the filtered category? And then we, uh, what we actually return out of this post method is uh, an array of posts um, where we map over each of the posts that we defined up here, and then we get a post. And the post is actually really super simple. So this is a post. And so it's an article with a card class. It shouldn't have a space there. Um, it's deconstructing a post off of props. Um, and so then we get all of that data that I, I, I pulled in the initial pull, right? So like, this is an array of nodes. Uh, a node has an ID and then front matter. And then that's the information that I want. Title, phone, tags, category, website. Um, so I'm looking through here and I'll go, okay, so a post, which is my node, dot front matter title. That's what this, the title of the thing is and so on and so forth. This is all just regular. I mean, it's JSX syntax, but it, these are all just traditional HTML5 elements, article, header, H2, break, small. Um, I'm actually not 100% if that's a valid HTML tag. Um, div. Um, this is a really lovely thing that I like about JSX where you can kind of define a Boolean here where I'm saying if this thing has a website, if the website string is not empty, nil, whatever, if it's truthy, then output this uh, anchor tag with all the stuff in it. If it's not empty, I mean, if it is empty, we just exclude this whole section. So it doesn't, I don't have to spit out commented code. I don't have to spit out like a blank div, whatever. I can just hide that completely from the render. Um, and then there's a button, but it doesn't actually link anywhere because I just wanted the styles, which I know is a big no-no, but I don't care um, with the category. Um, I was going to talk about the helmet, or not the helmet, the, the da, 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 what did I call it? Oh, the layout component. Uh, we want to start there. So the layout component is kind of like the wrapper for the whole thing, right? So <laughs> as such, there's a site wrapper. And then I have this hero header component, which I'm about to break into in a second. Then there's the content wrapper. So like if you're familiar with WordPress, <laughs> this is almost exactly how WordPress likes to do it. Uh, you have a site wrapper, and then you like do your hero information. Then you have a content wrapper and a footer, right? And, and, and that's pretty much how we build websites in general. But um, this is pretty simple. This is what my website structure looks like. Um, inside of the hero header, okay, uh, one quick thing about React. Children will literally just render anything that's inside of the layout component. So we're on index layout. All of this gets rendered here where I've got this children highlighted. So all this stuff renders before it and all this stuff renders after it. Um, that's really neat if you have things where you want to put a wrapper around a thing so that you can style it correctly or whatever. Um, oh, hero header. Okay, so hero header is really cool because I'm doing what's called a static query. So I didn't want to pass props down into the hero header and like do whatever um, for it because I needed data for the hero header, but that data was not important to anything kind of around it. It really wasn't important to the, the layout component as a whole. Um, so you can do this thing called a static query where I can say, I just want to ask GraphQL for this little bit of information. Um, it'll make a single query, um, which is a network request, but it's really small. Most of the time it's cached. Um, and in this, being a static generator, this all happens at build time anyway. It doesn't happen in real time when you're literally hitting the page. So it's totally fine to do this. You don't want to do this a million times because it'll take your build forever to build, but it's okay to do for these like little one-off things. My event for a one-off thing was um, really just needed the title and the description inside the body of the, of the uh, text. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, this was pretty cool. Gatsby is pretty neat because it's, I want to say it's smart about its file structure. That's not exactly true, but it is smarter than other things. 
So in my source, uh, I mean not source, in that directory structure, I have this static thing. Inside of static, you have a folder called assets. And Gatsby knows about anything inside of the assets folder that's inside of the static folder. So I can type assets call your tnj.jpg and when Gatsby builds and when it in the development architecture, it knows to look directly here and do that information, even though I'm not using the relative path, I'm using the, the static path of forward slash like root assets, even though this isn't technically root, Gatsby's smart enough to like discern that information. Um, and that's really all I have about the actual code. Um, one quick note is um, with this, um, with this um, starter that I used, it has Gatsby SAS, Gatsby plugin SAS already installed. Uh, which gives me the ability to use the CSS or you know SCSS files, which I definitely prefer. Um, so this thing had a whole lot of styles, and I almost stripped all of them out and just kind of started over from scratch. I kept their like main idea, um, and I never use pixels. So anytime you see pixels, that's probably them. Uh, but I stripped out most of the stuff in here because I love I love using Display Flex and um, like I like uh, transitions on button hover states and stuff like that. But um, anyway, um, you guys are welcome to look at this code and you can do whatever you want with it. I recommended that other people in um, in other communities take my. Uh, open source project on GitHub and like you can do whatever you want with it. You can clone it and build your own. You can delete everything that I have. You can um, do anything with it. I, I particularly don't care. Um, I liked it. People seem to really like it in my community. Like the first day that I, I linked it on Nextdoor, I had like 1,200 unique visitors that day which is nuts because that is, I looked at all my Google Analytics for all the websites I've ever launched from my own personal projects. And that is the most I've ever gotten combined. So like if you took all the other websites I've ever built and combined them, that doesn't even equal the traffic that I got from <laughs> that one day on that one website. And since then it's, you know, it's plateaued out and like people don't, um, they're not going to it as much. Around lunchtime is when I noticed a lot of people go. Um, the last thing that I want to touch Josh, on I'm going to jump is, in real fast. Uh, I just want to make sure that if it. anyone has a question that you go ahead and post it in chat. I want to make sure that if, if you're not paying attention to the chat right now and anything that Josh has said has either confused you, gone over your head, know that you're not alone because Josh goes over my head pretty regularly because he's, he's a smart guy. But uh, I want you to make sure that you do post in, ch in chat that you have a question and we'll get Josh to answer it for you. I will do my best. I can't, I'm not the smartest in the world, but I do all right. Um, okay, so last thing that I want to talk about is, okay, so I've got this static site and it works great on my computer, um, but I want, I want the world to see it, right? Like I wanted other people to use it. Um, and I, once again, what's the minimum effort, maximum reward that I could get out of this thing? And so, of course, Brian sold me on Netlify, like, what is this, like almost three years ago when we worked at Rocket Fuel together, he was like, there's this crazy new website and it's for free and you can host static websites on it. And I was like, that's dumb. And then I've used it a lot since then. Like I, I literally host my personal blog, which is right here on there, which I don't post stuff to. As you can see, the last post was over two years <laughs> ago. Um, and I was like, I actually had a whole bunch of deploys on here from projects that I was like, I want to test something really stupid, but I want other people to see it. And so like I built something that was like a one-off static site and then definitely pushed it to Netlify just so somebody could get a URL and visit it and do whatever. But this seemed like the perfect thing to like hop up on and uh, put on Netlify. And you know what? I wasn't even 
I didn't even, I wasn't even mad about the end URL dot netlify.com. Like if they can get their free press, I don't care. I'm not about to buy a domain for this thing. Josh, I'm going to jump in so, on you one more time because the Netlify stuff is super fun and super easy, but I have a question in chat. Uh, I'm new to, to JS and have basic knowledge of it. Been working on a project that uses Next.js. Is Next.js the same as Gatsby or if, if you wanted to go into the details of maybe what makes them different? So Next.js is not uh, really the same as Gatsby. So Next.js is like server side React rendering. Um, they, I will say that they probably share a lot of things when it comes to that. But Gatsby is more of like a default framework for building static websites. Next.js is probably better at not so much being a framework, but being a set of guidelines for building server-side React code that's dynamic, like that's consuming from a data, like that's constantly consuming from a data source. Whereas, you know, Gatsby, when you hit that build button, it's static. Like it's not, I mean, you can write JavaScript and it'll definitely go out and do whatever it'll fetch. But the, the I guess the typical use case for Gatsby is more, you have, a single data source that doesn't change super often that um, that you want to be lightning fast. So it's perfectly okay to be static until you know that the thing changes. Now, I'm sure Brian and a lot of people can tell you about the fact that um, uh, Gatsby and all these other things, they also have like Lambda functions and stuff like that where you can kind of I won't say cheat the system, but essentially you're like working around the fact that it's a static site generator. So what you could do is have a Lambda function that every time your data source updates, it triggers a build on your Gatsby site, which is, I just feel like that's, if, if I was going to do that, if I had like this really dynamic data source that I wanted to get information out of, and it, and it sounds like uh, Next.js 9.3 has some static site generator features, like if I had a more dynamic data source, I'd probably try to look out, reach out for Next.js. Like I'm, I need to get better. Like I need to do something in Next.js, but I've never really had a project that I want. Cause I'm also, so to give you guys a quick background, I'm actually a Ruby developer by day. <laughs> and then like, I just like doing front end stuff. Cause that's where I've always had a really good passion. But if I was going to write a CRUD app, it would be in Ruby because I love Ruby, um, but yeah, I wouldn't reach out to Next.js, but but not saying it's not the right tool to use, because if you're good with JavaScript and like you do need that CRUD thing from a data source, like why not reach out to Next.js? So yeah, that was a good question. Um, they're similar, but not exactly the same. Um, okay, Netlify. So, Netlify was a really easy push for me because I just wanted a place to host this website. And I have a server, but you know, I would have had to set up my freaking Nginx server block and all this stuff. And I'm like I said, <laughs> minimum effort, maximum reward. So I just set up a new project on on Netlify. And then it was essentially, it was literally like, I think in the when it said, what kind of project is this? I think I selected Gatsby and it was like, okay, cool. I'll take it from here pretty much uh, when I linked it to a GitHub project. And then it just, it literally does a build. Let me see if uh, deploys, let me show you a build. So it installs all the stuff from my uh, dependencies thing. And then let's see, and it uses go. I might need to zoom in just a little bit on that. Let me see. Uh, well, you don't get to actually see the part where it says like installing Gatsby because uh, it happens inside of the node J or like uh, NPM. So like, okay, so let's just say, oh, here we go. So it's like NPM install. Let's just pretend this is all NPM install and getting the server set up to do all my stuff. So Ruby install, PHP, whatever. Uh, yarn install and then boom it's going and getting all my packages and then I've got some file server or file system packages and then there's Gatsby and then 
whatever, and it does some stuff. And then I actually have the Netlify CMS installed on this, but it was totally useless for my use case. So I bailed on that pretty quickly. Um, it builds all my packages, save the lock file, and then it starts and does all the other stuff. And this is actually, all this Go stuff is something that Netlify is doing on their end, which is pretty neat because it's building a little server, um, a little Linux server with Go, and then it's running some preset commands. And then this is all the same things that you would see. Oh, there it is right there, Gatsby build. So when I type Gatsby build, this is all the same stuff you'd see on my local computer if I ran it. And then it took two minutes and 14 seconds to build, um, which that's actually really big. Normally it's about 49 seconds is what it takes. And then your site's live, like that's it. Uh, I didn't have to do anything. Like I didn't have to configure that. Just so y'all know, I didn't do any of this configuration. Like it did all that for me um, based on my GitHub thing. And so every time I push code to GitHub, it if the if I push it to the master branch, it automatically starts building. And that's it. Like that's all you have to do with Netlify. The only other thing I did uh, with this was you can set up a custom domain. So it's like collierville com, but I didn't want to do that. So I was fine with them being their website, but I wanted it to be not, I think it was like, you know, it's some made up name that Netlify did. So it's like, blah, 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 like cheese waffle at dot Netlify.com. And I, I was, I wanted it to be something that I could type into next door and the like people who are on next door, which are typically anyone from the age of like 45 and 957. Um, I wanted all of those people to be able to use this website. So yeah, uh, I tried to make it as accessible as possible, which is another reason why I use larger fonts on this and smaller fonts for things I didn't want people to click on. Um, so yeah, that is me. There we go. Guess back into this view. Of course, that view somehow got messed up. Excellent news. Um, so are there any other questions for Josh about anything that we've talked about or touched on today? Uh, anything that y'all want to um, ask about Netlify, Gatsby, Josh questions, don't get him started on any sort of like gardening, farming, that sort of thing uh, about what uh, what we're doing here today. I'm gonna see if I can get this fixed up while we're still here. Cause I hate that I'm not perfect, but that's fine. Um, Cause if not, we'll go ahead and say, this has been a good time. Josh, thanks obviously for presenting. Always handy, always good to have. Um, oh, let's see, getting into front end stuff. There's so many options, React, Vue, Angular. Any suggestions on where to start framework wise? I'll let you tackle a piece of that, Josh. Um, okay, so here's what I'll say is if you're getting in the frame front end stuff, like don't do a framework. Uh, there's a really great course uh, that I see it talked about all the time. I'm, gonna, I'm sure Brian already has this URL. It's called JavaScript 30. Like learn JavaScript. That's going to be my first recommendation for you is like, all of this stuff, React, Vue, and Angular, Backbone, CoffeeScript, jQuery even, those are all things that are just built on the foundation of JavaScript. So if you know JavaScript, like actual JavaScript, then you will be a better developer of any of those things. Like you'll be a better Vue, like you'll write better Vue code, you'll write better React code just because you know JavaScript better. So learn JavaScript, JavaScript 30. I think I can post it in the chat. And that's by Wes Boss, which is a, he's a great uh, JavaScript educator, great developer educator. Uh, I'll also say, I'll throw this in there, like make sure you learn HTML too. Make sure you learn HTML and CSS and have a, a solid foundation around the, the holy trinity of, what, of front end development, right? JavaScript is super important. And obviously uh, Josh's point of getting 
um, getting those foundational pieces are going to help you learn those frameworks much better. Uh, but also, like, let's make sure not to forget HTML because HTML is amazing. Yeah, uh, to, to leverage on that point, yeah, the holy trinity, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. CSS, to be completely honest, every backend developer 